welcome to the first ever Tide School tutorial. In this series we're going to explore the natural processes that make tides, waves, winds and currents and discover techniques to tap into their energy and seize the power. Although invisible to the naked eye, the tides have a huge impact on our adventures, transforming the coastline every six hours. The tide can flood beaches, reverse the flow of rivers and expose razor sharp rocks. The highest tides in the world can reach 16 metres, that's the height of a five-storey building. But even places with small tides have a considerable effect on what you're doing, whether it's swimming, sailing, surfing, scuba diving or simply walking along the shore. So let's start at the very beginning. What actually makes the tide change? So tides are essentially huge waves running along the coastline. And when you get high tide, that's when you get the peak of the wave. And low tide is when the trough passes. And generally, when the high tide passes, the trough is six hours away. So in six hours, it gets closer and the tide gets lower and then another six hours and the next peak comes and that's why there's six hours from high to low tide. So I've got a little drawing here helping explain it. So with, this is, would be a coastline, there might be 600 kilometres between these, these houses. So when, and this is the tide wave, so when we're here is low tide and it's high tide over there and in six hours time the peak of the tide wave approaches us and then we get high tide and it's low tide there and then another six hours later we get low tide and it's high tide there and then six and other hours and it's high tide again. So you go low tide, high tide, low tide, high tide. So the important thing to understand is that it's the energy that's moving along and not the actual water at that speed. And to best illustrate that, I've got this rope and I'm going to flick it and I'm going to show how it moves along to illustrate that concept. So what's really good about this demonstration is it shows you, if you look at the individual rope fibres, they only move a little bit, but the energy is what's racing along the coast. And that's what you apply on a really big scale with the tide waves. It's the energy that's travelling along and the actual water particles are only moving a little bit. So these tide waves are connected through all the world's oceans and they're basically made by the gravitational pull from the moon and sun, which creates the shape, and then the spinning of the earth sets them in motion. So, in the Pacific Ocean where we are now, you've got one wave that's travelling all the way up this coast, and you've got another wave that's travelling all the way down there. So high tide, so the peak of the wave, travels like that. In the Atlantic Ocean, you've got one from Cape Horn, sorry, Cape of Good Hope, this is Cape Horn. So from Cape of Good Hope, all the way up the coast of Africa, all the way up to Europe, France, and then Land's End. And then when it gets there, it travels up the English Channel, and it joins a wave that's in the North Sea and there's a perpetual wave spinning around the North Sea like that. You can work out the direction a tide wave is travelling along your coast by comparing the times of high tide either side view. The harbour that experiences high tide earliest is the direction the tide wave is travelling from and it will always flow that way. 
So with this knowledge of how the tides work and which direction the tide waves go, it means you've got a much better idea of why the water level is going up and down. And that means that if something's happening, you can get a better, quicker assessment of, of what the situation is because you can take a step back and you can say, right, so the tide wave's coming from that way, so this is what's happening, and then you can adapt your plan depending on what those conditions are.